Hello friends, so welcome to the lecture on generalized Eigen vectors and Jordan canonical form. So, as we know that if a matrix of order n by n having n linearly independent Eigen vectors, then the matrix can be written as P into D into P inverse or in other way uh, other words we can say the matrix is diagonalizable or the matrix is similar to a diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are the Eigen value of the matrix A. So, if the matrix is not diagonalizable means the matrix does not have n linearly independent Eigen vectors, then how to find out a similar type of transformation so that at least we can write this matrix as P j into P inverse where j is a block diagonal matrix. So, I want to say that if matrix is diagonalizable then I can write P into D into P inverse where D is a diagonal matrix and if matrix is not diagonalizable then write it P into J into P inverse where J is a block diagonal matrix. So, it is a generalized similar transformation where we are reducing a given matrix into block diagonal matrix. So, for doing this we have to talk about Jordan blocks. So, the definition of Jordan block is a Jordan block corresponding to a given Eigen value lambda is a k by k matrix with lambda on the main diagonal and one on the super diagonal. So, for example, if I want to write a Jordan block of size 1 with respect to Eigen value lambda equals to lambda 0. So, j 1 lambda 0 is given as by this matrix. If I want to write a Jordan block of size 2 corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to lambda 0, then it will be lambda 0, lambda 0 in the main diagonal, 1 in the super diagonal and 0 will be below. Similarly, a Jordan block of size 3 corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to lambda 0 can be written in the same way. So, lambda 0, 1, 0, 0, lambda 0, 1 and 0, 0, lambda 0. So, here you can notice that lambda 0 are in the main diagonal and 1 is in the super diagonal. So, in the similar way a Jordan block of size k corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to lambda 0 can be written as lambda 0, 1, 0, 0, lambda 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, lambda 0, 1 and finally, 0, 0, 0, lambda 0. So, it is a k by k matrix. So, this is the definition of Jordan block of different size. So, if someone ask you write a Jordan block of size 2 corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to 3. So, it can be written as size 2 Eigen value is 3. So, it is given as 3 1 0 3. Now, we will see some properties of Jordan blocks. So, a Jordan block has only one Eigen value lambda equals to lambda 0. So, for example, if you are having this particular matrix it is a Jordan block of size k. So, the Eigen value of this will be lambda equals to lambda 0 with algebraic multiplicity k. So, algebraic multiplicity of this will be k and the determinant of a Jordan block of size k corresponding to lambda equals to lambda 0 will be given as lambda minus lambda 0 raised to power k. The geometric multiplicity of lambda equals to lambda 0 
of a Jordan block of size k will be 1 means there will be only one linearly independent eigenvector corresponding to a given Jordan block whatever be the size. And third important property is if E1, E2, Ek denotes the standard basis in a k dimensional vector space, then Jk lambda 0 E1 is given as lambda 0 E1 and Jk lambda 0 Ei is given as lambda 0 Ei plus Ei minus 1, where i is varying from 2 to k. So, suppose I want to find out j k lambda 0 e 2, so it will become lambda 0 e 2 plus e 1. Now, after learning about Jordan blocks, let us divide the uh, define the Jordan canonical form. So, a Jordan canonical form is a block diagonal n by n matrix given like this. So, here basically what we are having? We are having these m Jordan blocks corresponding to eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2 oh, up to lambda m and respective size are k 1 for the Jordan block corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 1, k 2 is the size of the Jordan block corresponding to eigenvalue lambda 2 and so on. So, in this way if a uh, the matrix is n by n matrix then k 1 plus k 2 plus up to k m should be equals to n. Please note that it is a block diagonal matrix and all these are 0 blocks. So, block diagonal and we are having 0 blocks above the block diagonal and below the block diagonals. So, here we are having m Jordan blocks as I told you and this complete matrix is called Jordan canonical form. So, and if I know the algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicity of different eigenvalues for a given matrix, then I can write the Jordan canonical form of that matrix that we will take some example of that. Now, as you can see the determinant of this Jordan Mat uh, canonical form is given as lambda 1 minus lambda raised to power k 1, lambda 2 minus lambda raised to power k 2 and so on up to lambda m minus lambda raised to power k m. And this can be easily obtained by using the concept of finding the determinant of the block diagonal matrix, where the determinant of the complete matrix will be the product of determinants of different block matrices. Similarly, corresponding to each block as I told you uh, when I was defining the Jordan blocks that corresponding to each Jordan blocks there will be only one linearly independent eigenvector. So, in that way I will be having this particular Jordan canonical form will be having m eigenvectors given as x 1, x 2, x 3 up to x m each corresponding to lambda on the Jordan blocks and this can be proved by the method of induction. Now, we are coming to a very important theorem and this tells us about uh, this is called Jordan canonical form similarity transformation. So, this particular transformation tells us that every square matrix of order n is similar to a Jordan canonical form j of the similar size that is if A is a matrix of order n by n, then A is similar to a Jordan canonical form J such that A can be written as S J S inverse. So, where S is the matrix containing the eigenvectors and generalized eigenvectors of A. Now, please note that here, if A is a diagonalizable matrix, in that case a will become p j p inverse, where p comes from the eigenvectors of A, because then if A is diagonalizable, A will contain n linearly independent eigenvectors and if I write those eigenvectors as columns of p, 
then I will get the model matrix P and J will be D where diagonal entries are the eigen values of A and P inverse. So, if A is diagonalizable, so this Jordan canonical transformation will become diagonalization. So, we can consider this J Jordan canonical transformation as the generalization of uh, uh, classic diagonalization transformation. So, in this way now question arise when A is not diagonalizable means A does not have n linearly independent eigen vectors then how to write this matrix S. Because if A is n by n matrix and I am able to find only let us say some m linearly independent eigen vectors corresponding to different eigen values of A then I will be able to write only m columns of S. So, from where I will write rest n minus m columns. So, those columns I will write by finding the generalized eigen vectors of the matrix A. So, for writing this particular matrix S, we need to learn how to find out the generalized eigen vectors of a matrix. So, let me define generalized eigen vector of a square matrix. So, if A is a square matrix of order n, a generalized eigen vector of A corresponding to the eigen value lambda is a non zero vector x satisfying A minus lambda i raised to power p into x equals to 0 for some positive integer p such that A minus lambda i raised to power p minus 1 x is not equals to 0. So, a minus lambda i raised to power p into x equals to 0 where x is a non zero vector, but a minus lambda i raised to power p minus 1 into x is not 0. So, we can say that a generalized eigen vector is a member of null space of a minus lambda i raised to power p. Let us take an example to find out the generalized eigen vector. So, find the generalized eigen vectors of a matrix A, where A is given as 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 0, 3. Now, if I see here the A is a upper triangular matrix, so eigen values of A will become 3, 1, 1. If I calculate the eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to 3, then a minus 3 i into x will become 0 and let us say it is x 1. So, from here I get an eigen vector x 1 equals to 1, 2, 2 transpose. Now, similarly, if I calculate the eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to 1, then a minus i into x equals to 0 and from here I get only one linearly independent eigen vector that comes out to be 1, 0, 0. So, here what we can say that the algebraic multiplicity of a is 2 while geometric multiplicity of lambda equals to 1 is only 1. So, hence A is not a diagonalizable matrix. So, if A is not a diagonalizable matrix and as I told you we can write A as 
S into J into S inverse by the Jordan canonical transformation. So, for writing the matrix S, I need to find out one generalized eigenvector corresponding to lambda equals to 1. So, it means a generalized eigenvector will be x 3 such that a minus i and that is I am talking about corresponding to lambda equals to 1. So, a minus i x 3 and a minus i square x 3 equals to 0 and a minus i x 3 should not be equals to 0. So, since I want to take a minus i x 3 should not be equals to 0. So, if from here I take a minus i x 3 equals to x 2 because as I told you x 2 is an eigen vector. So, it is a non zero eigen vector. So, this particular equation satisfies this condition of generalized eigen vector. If I multiply both side by a minus i then it will become a minus i square into x 3 and it comes out to be a minus i x 2 and from here a minus i x 2 is 0 because x 2 is an Eigen vector. So, hence I need to find out an Eigen vector or generalize Eigen vector let me say x 3 which is satisfying this particular condition. So, that I can calculate by using or by solving this non-homogeneous system of equations. So, if I solve it here it will become a minus i x 3 equals to x 2. So, this gives me x 3 equals to 0 1 0 transpose. So, here x 3 is a generalized Eigen vector of the matrix A corresponding to Eigen value lambda equals to 1. So, in this way we can calculate the generalized Eigen vectors. Once you find out the rest m minus n generalized Eigen vectors then you are having m linearly independent Eigen vectors corresponding the square matrix A of size n and then what you have done you have calculated n minus m generalized Eigen vectors corresponding to different Eigen values. So, what you can do you will be having n total Eigen vectors and generalized Eigen vectors and those n vectors you can write as the columns of a matrix and that matrix will become matrix S. So, if x 1, x 2, x 3, x n is the set of all linearly independent Eigen vectors and generalized Eigen vectors of the matrix A, then S will be the matrix having columns as these Eigen vectors and generalized Eigen vectors. So, let us take an example to write the Jordan canonical transformation of a given matrix. So, example is find the Jordan canonical form of the matrix A equals to 2, 2, 1, 0, 2, minus 1 and 0, 0, 3. Also find a matrix S such that A equals to S j S inverse where 
J is the Jordan canonical form of A. So, let me solve this particular example. So, first of all I need to find out eigen values of A and again you can see A is an upper triangular matrix. So, eigen value will be given by the diagonal elements. So, here eigen values are lambda equals to 3, 2, 2. The algebraic multiplicity of lambda equals to 2 is 2. Now, we will see what is the geometric multiplicity of this. If the geometric multiplicity of the eigen value lambda equals to 2 is 2, then the matrix is diagonalizable. If it is 1, then it will be we have to find out one generalized eigen vector to write the matrix S. So, the eigen vector corresponding to corresponding to lambda equals to 3 is given as let us say x 1 and this comes out to be minus 1 minus 1 and 1 transpose. Now, eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to 2. So, it means a minus 2 i into x equals to 0. So, from here what I got? I got only one linearly independent eigen vector which is let me write as x 2. So, x 2 becomes 1 0 0 because when I will write a minus 2 i the first equation will become 0 2 x 2 plus x 3 equals to 0. Second equation will give us that x 3 is 0. So, from there I will get x 1 is also 0 and third equation will give me again x 3 equals to 0. So, here I will get x 2 equals to 0 equals to x 3 and x 1 is arbitrary. So, I have chosen x 2 x 1 is 1 means x 1 x 2 x 3 are different components of x 2. Now, I need to find out one generalized eigen vector corresponding to lambda equals to 2. So, if I solve for that a minus 2 i square x equals to 0 which is equivalent to solving a minus 2 i let me write this x 3 equals to x 2. So, if I do it I will get x 3 as the generalized eigen vector and this comes out to be 0 1 by 2 0. So, after doing this now I need to write matrix S and the matrix J. So, here my matrix J as I told you I can write with only the information about algebraic multiplicity and geometric multiplicities of the different eigen values of A. So, here 3 is having algebraic multiplicity 1, geometric multiplicity 1. So, there will be a 1 by 1 block of 3. Now, the algebraic multiplicity of the eigen value is 2. So, algebraic multiplicity of a given eigen value tells us that how many what will be the size total size of the sum of various blocks corresponding to this eigen value. So, here it is saying this that algebraic multiplicity is 2. So, it will be a 2 by 2 blocks corresponding to eigen value lambda equals to 2. The geometric multiplicity of lambda equals to 2 is 1. 
So, geometric multiplicity tells us the total number of blocks corresponding to that eigenvalue. So, algebraic multiplicity tells us size, total size, ge geometric multiplicity, total blocks. So, algebraic multiplicity is 2, geometric multiplicity is 1, so only one block of size 2. So, I will be having a block of size 2 corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equals to 2. So, in this way, this particular matrix becomes the Jordan canonical form of A. Now, I can write the matrix S edge the minus 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So, this vector edge column, this vector edge column and third column will come from here. So, these are the matrices J and S such that A equals to S J S inverse and you can verify it later on. So, this is the overall process for find using the Jordan canonical transformation for finding the matrix S and the Jordan canonical form J of a given matrix. Similarly, if I take this example, so find the Jordan canonical form J of this matrix. So, if I solve it here, the eigenvalues coming out to be lambda equals to 3, 3, 3. So, algebraic multiplicity of lambda equals to 3 is 3. If I calculate the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue lambda equals to 3, then a minus 3 i x 1 equals to 0. This gives me x 1 equals to 1, 2, 0. So, hence the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals to 3 is 1. Now, calculate the generalized eigenvector. So, a minus 3 i x 2 equals to x 1. So, from that I got x 2 equals to 1, 1, 1 and the another because I need to calculate two generalized eigenvectors for writing the matrix S. So, another generalized eigenvector can be written as a minus 3 i cube x 3 equals to 0, which I can have a minus 3 i x 3 equals to x 2 from this relation. So, from there I got x 3 equals to 1 minus 1 1 transpose. So, hence j will means total block is 1, total block is 1, size is 3. So, a Jordan block of size 3. So, 3 1 0 0 3 1 0 0 3 and s will become 1 2 0 is the first column, 1 1 1 is the second column and 1 minus 1 is the third column. Hence, we have a equals to s j s inverse. So, I have taken a couple of examples for finding the Jordan canonical transformation for a given matrix. If matrix is diagonalizable, then Jordan canonical form will be equal to the diagonal matrix having eigenvalues as the main diagonal entries. So, let me explain the relation of Jordan canonical form of a matrix with minimal polynomial. So, a given matrix A of order n, then the J C of F of A, the eigenvalues are the entries on the main diagonal. So, if the minimal polynomial of A is m lambda, and it is given as lambda minus lambda 1 raised to power s 1, lambda minus lambda 2 raised to power s 2 and up to lambda minus lambda k raised to power s k, where s i is the size of the largest Jordan block corresponding to lambda i in A. So, powers in the minimal polynomial corresponding to different terms, different factors will give you the size of largest block corresponding to that particular eigenvalue. And if lambda minus lambda 1 raised to power r 1 into lambda minus lambda 2 raised to power r 2 up to lambda minus lambda k raised to power r k is the characteristic polynomial, then r i is the number of occurrence of lambda i on the main diagonal which is obvious. So, the geometric multiplicity of lambda i is the number of lambda i Jordan blocks in 
A because each Jordan block will give you only one linearly independent eigenvector. So, let us take an example corresponding to this particular relation. So, consider a 6 by 6 matrix A having characteristic polynomial lambda minus 3 raised to power 4 into lambda minus 2 raised to raised to power 2 and minimal polynomial as lambda minus 3 raised to power 3 lambda raise, minus 2 raised to power 2. So, here what I am having? I am having an example here A is a 6 by 6 matrix having characteristic polynomial edge C of lambda equals to lambda minus 3 raised to power 4 into lambda minus 2 raised to power 2 and minimal polynomial is m lambda equals to lambda minus 3 raised to power 3 and lambda minus 2 raised to power 2. So, find j mean Jordan canonical form of a. So, here as I told you that these powers will give you the size of maximum biggest Jordan block corresponding to these eigenvalues and these are the number of occurrence of these eigenvalues on the main diagonal. So, here I am having 4. So, the lambda equals to 3 will occur 4 times on the main diagonal out of which the biggest Jordan block will be having size 3. So, 4 equals to 3 which is the biggest Jordan block then what is rest 1. So, from here I can get an information that the there will be 2 Jordan blocks corresponding to lambda equals to 3, 1 of size 3, another 1 of size 1. So, hence I can have 3, 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, 3. This is the block of size 3, another one of size 1, so 3. And then here I am having 2 times occurrence of lambda equals to 2 and the maximum Jordan block will be having size 2. So, 2 equals to 2. So, there will be only one Jordan block of size 2. So, 2, 1, 0, 2 and rest are 0 blocks. So, in this way this is the Jordan canonical form of A if characteristic polynomial and minimal polynomials are given in this way. If minimal polynomial is lambda minus 3 raised to power 2 and another one lambda minus 2 raised to power 2. So, now what is happening? I am having total 4 size corresponding to lambda equals to 3 and the size of the biggest block is 2. So, there will be 2 ways of writing 4 having the biggest entry as 2, one is 2 plus 2, another one is 2 plus 1 plus 1 and the other one is 2 which I have to have biggest 1, 2. So, 2 like this. The, so, the possible Jordan form will be if I take this particular thing. So, there will be 2 block corresponding to lambda equals to 2 each of size 2. So, 3 1 0 3 then 3 1 0 3. Then what I am having? Here I am having 2 1 0 2. So, this is one of the possible Jordan canonical form. Obviously, you can interchange the Jordan blocks. So, here I am not taking consideration of reordering of the Jordan blocks. 
I am taking them as the same matrix. The other possibility is if you use this combination. So, in this combination what I am saving one of the Jordan block corresponding to lambda equals to 3 of size 2 and 2 r of size 1 1. So, it I am having 3 1 0 3 and 2 r of size 1 1. and then I am having 2 1 0 2. So, this is n rest these are zeros. So, this is the two possibilities for this the uh, this is, these are the two possibilities of the Jordan canonical form J of this matrix A having this characteristic polynomial and this minimal polynomial. So, hence I can say that the information you can write the Jordan canonical form of a matrix if you know either the algebraic and geometric multiplicity of each eigenvalues or you can get any information if you know the minimal polynomial as well as characteristic polynomial of that particular matrix. So, in this lecture we have learned about Jordan canonical transformation and how to write Jordan canonical form of a given matrix. These are the references. In the next lecture, we will learn evaluation of matrix functions. Thank you very much.